What you see here is the most recent mess I've gotten myself into, or should I say my most recent project. This is an old trailer which I've gotten. And you should see the before pictures of this thing. Take a look at this. This thing's been sitting in the ground for over 10 years and it needs a lot of fixing. So the paint is done, frame's been cleaned up, but now we're gonna do the wiring. So I have some wires cut short here. It's a four pin flat, this ground I redid. So I'm gonna rewire all of that. I'm gonna replace these corner marker lights. You see I already got those out. This is what they used to look like. Horrible, right? Crusty. These here were just reflectors, so I replaced those with some of the old lights that were in other areas. I think they were here. Those are gonna get replaced up here on the top. Both corners are gonna do red marker lights in there as well. Down here at the bottom, I already cleaned that up and I got the aluminum bracing for the stop light. This thing's had lights put on and removed so many times. This trailer is 31 years old. This is where the original lights from the U-Haul factory came from. I think at one point there was some lights up there that were welded shut. Here's the other one for the corner. And down here, I modified this with a piece of ABS so I can flush mount the plate on there. Remove this ugly ass light here, that thing out of there. I'm gonna upgrade those with these nice cleaner flush mount lights. So that way, when you hit something from the back, it doesn't bust the light like it did on the right side. This will be flat and it'll be protected. This should protect the light. That's kind of like the way it's supposed to work. Got some new stainless hardware, which I will be using everywhere. And on the inside, I cleaned up this mess and I ran some wires through the single positive lead anyway. I'm gonna use some flashing tape. I'm gonna run those straight up with wire loom, connect them together there and back down at the parking light wire, which runs through the bottom of the trailer. I'll clean up all that stuff down there. I'm gonna use wire loom, zip it all up, make it nice and neat, waterproof it, tape it, so it doesn't drag on the ground like it is currently. And this trailer should be looking sharp as hell at night time. But right now it's not. Before I start wiring up this four pin flat harness, you can see that these wires are here already pre-existing and they're gonna match up color to color, which is nice. And I got my ground, which I redid. A nice clean bowl, so this is good. And you should always run out a ground here at the frame and connect it in unison so that we don't rely on just getting the ground at the ball because you might be disappointed with how your connections are. And while I'm speaking about that, like in me, I already go ahead and painted this whole frame and when I did I got some overspray on here plus there's some old corrosion make sure you cut them off and clean them and start with new copper connections so that way you're not going to be disappointed with unstable lighting because the connections are poor take the extra second and cut the wire and make sure it's clean and you're working with a good start so when you reconnect your main four pin flat that's going to connect to the trailer side make sure that you're leaving yourself about at least about two and a half to three feet preferably so that way there's going to be enough so the truck can turn left and right when pulling the trailer you're not going to accidentally yank your wires out of the truck tongue that would be a bad thing and when you're connecting your wires this is the way i do it and i know that some people are not going to be a fan of this because i've gotten this comment so many times i'm used to being people's pin cushion but i'm going to show you in my opinion the best simplest and most affordable way to make a good solid wiring connection the way I do it is I pull the insulation back about an inch and a half, I cross them over like an X and I wrap them like a fishing knot. Then I insulate them or shrink wrap them, soldering if you have solder available. If not, it's not the end of the world, but either way, this is an irreversible, solid as hell connection. You're never gonna go wrong with making a connection like this. Here's what the knot looks like halfway. So I put it on, I started the twist and I got about two wraps. This is fully wrapped up and this connection is ready to be insulated. That is one solid connection, my friend. In all trailer wiring, you're gonna have the same colors are always gonna be common. You're gonna have white, which is gonna be your ground, which is going right here to my ground bolt on the other side of this trailer tongue. Yellow, which is gonna be your left directional. Right directional is gonna be your green, and brown is gonna be your parking lights. When you look a little closer at my wiring coming through my tongue, you can see I got a brown here, I got a brown here. Then I have my green and my yellow, which are my left and right directionals, and I have two browns. So what I did is I just ran a jumper wire between two lights up there because this whole circuit is dead until I start plugging them in one by one. I got my meter set to continuity, one on one of the browns, and then I'm gonna connect this to the other. You get that audible ch alert chime there. That's basically telling you, you have continuity across these two browns. So these two need to be connected. Then you're just gonna run out your left and right directionals, ground right here, white to white. Then you can start wiring up your lights in the back. 
Now all four of my connections are pretty much made and they're looking good. I'm gonna push this into the tongue trailer a little bit and I've got this wire tie here. And what this is for, as I suggest you definitely do this and here's why. Because when you put the wire tie here and anything ever pulls on these wires from this, this position, it's gonna put pressure on the wire tie, not on the connection. So that way it's not gonna wanna pull out your hard work of making these beautiful connections because you're just gonna rip them apart to shreds. Put something here to take the stress, It'll save you a lot of trouble down the road. With our wiring done, the last thing to do is just neaten it up. And the way we're gonna do that is gonna use this wire loom and I have eighth inch, which I'm gonna use for my ground. And then I have this four pin flat, which I'm gonna use three eighths or possibly half inch. And I have this five eighths, which I'm gonna use for my main harness, which is gonna run the length underneath the trailer. Let me just insulate this on the ends with electrical tape or cloth tape, whatever you have. And that will pretty much secure this. So that way, if this wire gets pinched between the trailer or gets smushed by a, um, a chalk or a block or whatever else you use when you're doing your trailering, it's a really good way to do wiring because it protects the wire from something like this. These thin little 18 gauge wires won't take much to destroy these little suckers. Before I move on to the back of the trailer lights, I'll show you what the rest of the front looks like when I'm completed. There's my ground strap right there, taped up, insulated. And here's my four pin flat, my three eighths loom. I insulated it with electrical tape and I have that run out. Plenty to connect to the truck. Run inside with some loom going through the frame, coming out there, and that's my next move back here. Look at what a different wire loom looks like compared to the rural wires. It looks so ghetto. Just to take a little time, any wire loom, see I got this piece of 3 which I'm going down here. I usually branch it off with quarter inch over here and here over there. So I'm gonna run that all the way through. It'll all look nice and neat like this. Eventually, I'm using these big ass wire loom, wire ties here for the parts of the frame. But if you don't have access to these, or they're kind of expensive to be honest with you, you just use regular eight inch ties. And if you can't make it with an eight inch, you could take one wire tie, stick it into another wire tie and make it as long as you need it to be. Little trick there for you. And also, speaking of tricks, when you pop, when you're testing your lights out, you can just take your extra drill battery. I just use a couple of spade or fork terminals, I guess, today. Connect to a piece of speaker wire with varying lengths so that way they can't buzz and short against each other. And you could just put one against the frame because you got the ground up there at the white. And you just take the copper to your light bulb and you can verify if it's actually working before you sew it up. So here I am at the back corner of the trailer right now and I got my light mounted onto my aluminum plate and I got the two wires run behind there which is going to be for my brake and my running lights. My ground I have going behind this self-tapping screw. So my battery is connected. I have one of the uh, outputs. This is for the parking lights. This one here is going to be for my ground. It'll work just like that because the whole vehicle, the whole trailer is my ground. So that would be that. This one here will do my stop lights and that looks great. There we go. So we just do the, this side, do the left side. The left side is a little weird. <coughs> Turns out that my light is a little bit larger than what I got to mount it onto. So I'm going to have to rip down another piece of black ABS plastic. Stretch that out a little bit longer and it'll actually wind up looking kind of similar to this side, which is kind of cool, I guess. Just a little bit more work for me. Another good practice is to take your loom, make sure the hole is going to be the appropriate size to get it through. And so instead of having a rough wire going down through a jagged piece of aluminum or steel or whatever, open up the hole a little bit so that way you can actually get the loom through there. So that way you have a good solid connection of protected wire so that we don't have to ever worry about a wire chafe. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to match the left side over here on the right. So what I did is I just took the original piece of bracket, screwed on a piece of black ABS, and I'm going to actually mount this onto there. So I have my hole run through. I have a ring terminal on the white, so I'm going to, when I screw it, I'm going to use two screws left and right. On the right will automatically catch the ground. On the left, that'll be structural, and then I'll run the wires down through, and I'll mirror what I did on the left side, connect the wires together. And these lights are done. And a little quick tip, if you're going to be drilling through this sheet metal or aluminum, these unit bits work like a godsend. Watch this. And what's, and what's 
really cool about it is that you step it. So if you need a certain size, like I need eighth inch, you just look for the mark for eighth inch, drill it till you got eighth inch. So I have all my connectors made, my grounds are done. All the parallel connections for all the lights are on there. For here, those are working. Backs are on, looking good, like the way we should. How did we test this, you ask? Well, here's how, we used the battery again. Right there, just ran it up. I got the negative going into the white and I have the positive going to the brown, just tentatively. Make sure when you run your lights out, make sure you knot them up so that way they don't fall through the holes like mine did. Then when my new lights come in in the mail, I can button this whole operation up. Here's the trailer lights installed. Two amber in the front, two on the front marker, two markers in amber on the front fender, two reds on the rear, the multi-directional stop lights down there, and of course the two marker lights up top. That's the way it's done. If you have any questions about doing your own wiring, your own trailer lights and stuff, shoot me a message. I'm always happy to help. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a like.